Okay, basically, um, pretty much kind of covered everything, um, except for one thing, which I normally kick, I normally get into earlier, but it was, I kind of forgot about, it, and actually, I just like to switch things up on people and just surprise the hell out of them. Um, your background in poetry, how did everything start, and how long have you been doing it? You know, if you've had any college experience, you know, college uh, courses, whatever. Your background, then we'll get in, we'll wind it down with your advice to pe other people. Sound good? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, I mean, I wrote, like, really when I was young, I don't know if I can count that. I'm not going to go there. Hey, I started in second, the first poem I remember was second grade, so. Yeah, but no, like, I was really wowed when I saw Maya Angelou perform. I was, like, 18 or 19 on television, and it made me cry, and I thought, wow, that's, like, really powerful. It showed me up with your potentials with poetry. And um, that was as early as I can really remember that was like significant. Okay. That was impressive. And um, I, I was influenced a lot by Kerouac and Ginsburg, the Beat Generation writers. Ginsburg completely, it made me feel like I could, I could write just because of the, its kind of looseness and the fact that he's just writing, they're writing about their everyday life, they're writing about spirituality, politics. And it was so exciting to me what, what they were doing in general that that inspired me. And, but I was working at the Boys, well, Northeast Ministry in uh, Marvine, Pembroke, Housing Development. I took some uh, high school students that was in a group of mine to Lafayette to see a, to see a performance poet as a jazz poet. And there, there was like, you know, I would take these kids all over to different colleges to give them like a thought, like, hey, you can go here. Right? Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. So, and um, there was like the poet was influencing me, and I sat up there. I said, "Wow, you know, I could do that." There, there's just something about what he was doing that I felt that was attainable for me to to write and read in front of people. So, I started to really write more. I was again like age 24 and 25, and when I when I first. Uh, really wrote some poetry I thought was like of significance that was like good enough to share. I went and shared it and I went to the fun house to an open mic. And uh, I remember that guy, one guy there saying, it's brilliant, oh, it's so good, but he's like, give me some Jim Morrison. He was heckling me, give me Jim Morrison. Cause That's the fun house. I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. uh, practiced with reading to the public. Yeah. You know, on paper it might have been fine, but, but it was, it was a good experience. I said, wow, this is the best I could do. And I just kept doing it. I just kept writing. I just kept doing it. And it just kept, kept happening. Really, poetry to me is happening. It just happens. Like, yeah. wow. There, that just happened. Like, if something you, will really strike me. I'll hear a you, line. I'll see something. And boom, that's a poem. It's almost like anything else where if you plan it and you force it, then you're writing for the money. If it comes naturally, you're writing You're writing from, experience, from life. Yeah, I... I it's just a, I know it's just a gift, you know, it's something that, I'm not gifted in fixing cars or cooking, yeah. or, that's not there, but, but somehow I can write pretty well, I could write essays, you know, in, in school I was able to write well, so, so it was a combination of all the aesthetics that I loved that influenced me, like art and music, nature, and to me it crystallized in poetry, because I would draw from the vocabulary, that I gained and the aesthetic experience and and and, and the spiritual spiritual journey and to me it crystallized there with poetry. Uh, reading Rumi was like the life changer. Rumi, the mystic poet from the 13th century, that 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 was huge. That was that was okay. almost the end of poetry for me because I, after him I didn't know like what else could I read. Like he, he blew me away so much. Which it's not true, not the end, there's so much yeah. out there, but he really was like that line in the sand. And he made me want to write like more positive things where you could read it and feel like, wow, my life's a more positive, uplifting thing for it. I was, re I was writing a lot of political poetry and kind of poetry had to do with maybe psychology and depression to a degree, and, uh, and erotic, erotic poetry. Oh, well, good, and maybe that'll come up from time to time. But Rumi made me think of like, okay, I, I want to be able to write this and give it to somebody and think, oh wow, you know, thank you. Like that was yeah. 
that that made me, you know, feel inspired about the world. Yeah. And that life is a beautiful thing. I mean, although the erotic poetry they can take you depending <laughs> on they can always get they can learn a few things from. Yeah, I'm well, sorry, but I had to throw that one in. You never know. It depends who the person is. <laughs> yeah, I had to throw that one like, in. I actually know um, a couple from actual, you know, uh, erotic fiction writers. I have a couple of good friends in other states and other areas that they really, it's more than just the sex in it. So it's like, you know, you know, I had to throw that in. Well, Henry Miller and Anais Nin were two huge influences, especially Henry Miller. And, you know, it just, they talked about sexuality. Yeah. Know, and, and they were, they were so talented writers so it, yeah you know and but back to what you were saying yeah, before we get so, too far off on yeah, this tangent yeah. well, then poetry like the question was what like how long so that's age so I'm 40 so so uh, I just kept doing it I moved to San Francisco so there's so much to say God I mean I did experienced a lot there we can always do another part of the interview later yeah I and mean, that's a whole other interview like or no, that's your bio. That's your forget the interview. That's that's part of your biography when you eventually write it. Yeah. Well, what was the original? I even forget the original question. I'm blabbering away. Um. Well, let's move on to the final one. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Your advice to anyone, um, poets, writers, artists, whether they're in grade school, whether they're 65 years old. So as a as far yeah, as well, craft, as far as, as, far as, as any life. aspect, of, as far as any aspect of it, you know, as far as like, uh, you know, how they say like, okay, like with myself, the way I write is free freestyle, free form. Yeah. I don't follow the rules of haiku or anything else, you know. It's so as far as like, okay, well, especially people writers in like high school or college, where these are the rules, you have to stick to them. This is the only way to do it. Which is, I never took a journalism class and I own a growing successful magazine, you know. Yeah. So it's like, you know, as far as like, you know, especially in those areas, um, you know, advice to people. Well, I always, one thing like a given is to read. Read as much as you can. Read, read in general, read. Just keep reading, get to the vocabulary. But read, read poetry, read literature, read things that, where they uplift your soul with the way they use words. The way they just turn those phrases and, and surprise you with the, how they've used their words. Because it's, it's like anything. They show you how, how, it can, how it's done. Like, yeah. wow, that was how it's done. That really affected me. And, and um, read a wide range if you can, you know. Read, read, read different places, different countries, different styles. If at all possible. I mean, it, you have to follow your heart and what you're interested in can't really force like yourself to do things you're interested in but if at all possible you know to broaden ones you know read with the reading yeah um, I find it's really helpful to be commune with nature uh, when when you're out in nature and you take a walk a basic walk in nature and you a lot of the stuff will kind of fall out that is buzzing around up in there. It's really helpful for the creative process. It, it, it like rejuvenates you. And as some of my, you know, creative constructors will say, they'll be, it'll cultivate like a, a prana there. The yeah. Energy, that energy will be cultivated and feeds you. Like, the nature will do that. And well, if you, can I interrupt here for a quick sec? If you're not really a nature person, you don't like to walk out in nature, like with myself, I find walking through, walking the city streets at night also helps. Because I'm not really one of those, it's yeah. like I, I prefer to, you know, so it's like, it, it doesn't always have to be nature, it depends on the type of what your preference is. That's a great inter interjection because I lived in the city, so, and I, boy, I didn't have to quit going to the park all the time, but I'd take a walk down the street and I would connect with whatever nature was around, the sky, the trees, anything that's nature. Or the weeds popping up in between the trees. <laughs> Yeah, yeah if, you, if you like it. So like, or, you know, that's part of a meditative practice, too. Yeah. Like, if one wants to just learn, you know, I always say, you know, one of the most important things is, is having some kind of meditation practice. And that, that comes across with reading, then, too, cause, because you, you're writing. I mean, you're just because you learn to focus. You learn to focus and have those other things that are not as necessary going on in the mind right now to just float away. Yeah. And they're not in the way. 
so you can just focus and you can focus on that energy that's really channeling through you you know mm -hmm. you know it's coming through you and it just goes to the pen and somehow there's something going on there and that that flow of energy you want to get out of the way as much as you can you know yeah and, and the more you're like filling it up with you know the you distractions know, of life and stress and you know it'll happen but if you can get that away you know connect with nature connect on a you know like connect with the breath you know, on a more walking. primal level to basically yeah, that'd be like the that'd things. be the best way to sum it up a more primal level yeah i mean because i you know i think those things are just as important as it's an ongoing process of like how you live your life and it's going to affect your writing it's not just you know getting a pen and doing certain activities to try to rhyme or something yeah. or not. you know i took some courses but and it was helpful to have feedback but you know, I don't think Jimi Hendrix learned guitar. Like you want to know what one of my two worst subjects in high school was? English. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you know, it's so... Yeah, it has its place. It's been yeah. helpful, but it's an ongoing school of life around us. So, mm -hmm. like, how are we going to use it? Like, how are we going to use our environment? Uh, you know, what are we going to choose to do? If we really want to, you know... Uh, uh, I think it just helps to... You know, when you're connecting with the things, you can connect with others then. Basically, the energy of the universe that flows through everything, essentially. Oh, well, yeah, that's absolutely true. Because I mean, everything in the universe is made of energy from that wall you're sitting on to us to, you know, everything has energy in it. So it's kind of like, like you said, on a more primal level. Well, that's the source. That's the source of all the creativity yeah. right there. So. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. I want to wind this up before the camera battery dies. All right, brother. Thank so, you yeah, did you enjoy it? Sure. Thanks for the opportunity. Don't sound so positive on that. Did you enjoy it? Sure. Yeah, I know. Personality. I know. But thanks for your time, Matt. I appreciate it. I had a great time.